Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel and I am <laughs> sweating. You might be wondering, Steph, why you sat sweating in the car? I literally feel like I'm like beading with sweat on my chest. So if I am, we'll just, we'll just ignore that. But yeah, I wasn't planning on necessarily sitting in the car and filming, but in the house right now, we have an alarm system and it's been playing up a little bit. So it's basically getting fixed at the moment and there's just a lot of beeping. So I thought I could either have a video where there's a lot of beeping in the background, which would be really annoying, or I could have a video where I'm just a bit sweaty. So you got that today. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a very sweaty story time. I was talking to you guys over on Instagram Live a couple of weeks ago now, and we were just talking about a few different things and basically got onto a topic of conversation about this thing that I'm gonna talk about today. And everyone was like, do a story time, we wanna hear more. And that's where I'm at. I literally just stuck to the seats then. <sighs> I don't know if I'm gonna be any good at doing story times. Like, I feel like I'm a terrible storyteller because I honestly, my brain like just goes off on a tangent every five seconds. You guys will, I'm sure, have realized this. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about a time when, this is before YouTube and stuff, I actually went on a PR trip. I went to Berlin and I had my drink, what should we say, tampered with? Um, and I ended up in hospital by myself in Berlin. So that was fun. Spoiler alert, it wasn't fun. Before we do get into the video, I want to give you guys a slight little trigger warning. I'll be totally honest, like spoiler alert here, I'm I'm fine. Uh, so nothing like soup, like what happened to me was bad, but nothing like terrible happened to me, if you know what I mean. But um, I wanted to give you guys a little trigger warning just in case, because obviously I know that tampered drinks can sometimes result in other things. Um, that wasn't the case in this instance, but I just, I, if, if you feel like maybe you might be triggered by this or it might dig up, you know, something, then I'm just letting you know. Um, but I personally, I feel like it should be okay if you do still wanna watch, but I just wanna do a quick little trigger warning just to be safe. Okay, so where do we start? I was 20 when this happened. I was in my first year at uni. For those of you that don't know, I actually went to uni in Surrey for like 10 months or so. A wasp literally just like smashed against my windscreen then. Go away. See, I was 20, I was in uni. I wasn't doing YouTube or anything, but I was blogging. I've been doing like internet stuff, kind of like as a job for around about 10 years or so. So before YouTube, I was doing blogging. And I was studying like fashion journalism at this uni, doing like fashion blogging on the sides. So at the time there was this website called Stylite, which was basically like an outfit showing website and you would like tag brands, all that sort of thing. Kind of like a lookbook, if you guys maybe remember that. But they had this competition running at the time. I was like signed up to their website and stuff. And there was like a, an email that came through where basically if your picture got the most votes and you were like part of the competition I think you had to do like a hashtag or something then you could win a trip to Berlin with them to go away for like it was like two days and one night or something and they would fly you out there put you up in accommodation like sort everything out and you could go to an awards evening with them and I like I'd been on a couple of trips before I'd never been on like an actual kind of PR trip I had like quite a small following at the time I don't know, it was maybe like 5,000 or something on Instagram and my blog and stuff. So like substantial, but obviously like nothing like it is now. And somehow, I don't really know how, I was gonna say like luck was on my side, but I guess it, it kind of wasn't by the time you hear the rest of the story. But um, I was one of the two winners. So there was me and then a French girl who was also a blogger. So a couple of weeks later, off I was on my way to Berlin. So I basically got picked up. I, again, like I said, I was living in Surrey at the time. So it wasn't too much of a journey. It wasn't like the six hours to get to London now. Ended up going to one of the London airports. I can't remember. And obviously the other girl who was French, she was coming from France. I think she was in Paris. So she was coming from there. And the company Stylite are actually based in Germany, I think. So it was just me going over by myself and then I would meet the brand there. And I traveled up to London before. I used to get like the mega bus from Plymouth all the way up to London. It used to take like eight hours. It was so long. That was when I literally first started out with like blogging and stuff. I would go to meetings and just literally do London up and back in one day. So I traveled by myself a little bit before, but nothing like this. I'd never actually gone on a plane by myself. So long story short, ended up doing that. That was fine. And you know, it wasn't too difficult or anything. It was quite straightforward. Got to Berlin, this part of the story is pretty standard to be honest. Got there, got picked up, got taken to the hotel, and met the people there. It wasn't like how you guys probably see PR trips and stuff now. It wasn't like this big thing and like the brands there and everything. It was just kind of like, hi, nice to meet you, congrats on the prize. It wasn't like a PR trip as such, like going away with the brands. So we got to the hotel, got met by everyone, like it was all pretty normal. Met the girl from France. I'm, I'm not gonna name her or anything just because, you know, there's not really 
much need to do that. And we got there, I think, like early afternoon, and it was actually the awards evening that night. So it's basically a case of get off the plane, get some food, meet everyone, go get ready, and then there was going to be a shuttle bus to basically take us to the awards evening. So yeah, got ready in my room, came down, met a couple of the people there. There was like a few other brand people, and then a few other people that were actually with Stylite that were like very fancy bloggers and stuff that didn't talk to any of us. Um, but we went there, went in the shuttle. The shuttle was literally almost like a party bus there were like lights flashing it was a great time got to the like award ceremony thing there was like a little party thing beforehand had like a couple of drinks a little bit of food a couple of nibbles and then it was the actual event and i you know i'm not claiming that i'm like best friends with the girl or i know her but i actually met before i i actually didn't even know who she was which is crazy now because of how like huge she is but i actually met nagin if you guys don't know nagin i will put her instagram on screen now i'm sure a lot of you do but i was sat like where i was sat was actually right next to her boyfriend who's now a fiance actually and we were talking and he was like you know getting excited because i think she was up for an award and as you do you just sort of like talk to each other well i say as you do it was a fashion event and things are definitely different now when i go to pr events but back in like the blogging days and when i was doing like journalism and like freelance writing and stuff everyone was literally how you think they are in like the devil was prada all that kind of stuff no one talks to each other and i'm there like ready to talk to anyone even if it's in a language i don't understand but um yeah ended up talking to this guy super super friendly so that's nagin's fiance and this isn't necessarily any relevance to the story but i ended up meeting him and he was he was literally like so in love with her and we were talking about her because I again I didn't know who she was I was like oh my god she's stunning and he was like that's my girlfriend I was like what the hell man but yeah, I find that to be quite funny because then I actually met them again a couple of years later in Amsterdam when I had to go and do something else for kind of like a PRE sort of kind of job so yeah the actual awards thing it was quite fun you know typical sort of event and then afterwards there was an after party so this is where things kind of kick off a little bit I was like after party yes I'm in Berlin they paid for my transport, they paid for my hotel, like they're buying me food. This was all so, so new to me. And I was just like, this is amazing you know this is great and don't get me wrong like the way i said that then makes it sound that i was like really sort of oh my god everything's amazing i want to add that i was brought up where again another little nugget of information when my sister was born she was very very ill almost didn't make it and so i think from that my because my mum almost lost my sister then as we grew up my mum was quite protective over us it was literally a case of you know don't walk home alone like the typical things but she would like drill it into us like don't walk home alone uh let me know when you get home do this don't do that don't talk to strangers it was very much kind of like drilled into us so even though i was very excited about everything i was still very much kind of i knew i was in a different country pretty much by myself like i wasn't but like, i didn't properly know anyone so i you know, I was technically kind of just like looking after myself. So off we went to the after party and back into that banging bus. I loved that bus. That's probably like one of my most favorite things of the night actually, because it was like an hour long drive, just in this party bus with loads of strangers, just having a great time. And so we all got dropped off at this venue and I don't remember what it was called, but I, I remember like everything about how it looked. There were like two security guards and then you walk downstairs because it was almost like a basement. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know loads about the Berlin underground nightclub scene. Um, but I feel like this, from what I've learned since and from what people have told me, this is quite a stereotypical kind of Berlin nightclub. Like I went down there and I don't know where it's like where you guys are from. I know a lot of you are like from the UK and stuff, but we went into the club and people were smoking, which was very alien to me. I remember literally going through the doors and the whole like underground basically was just filled with smoke it was like light it was almost like an actual smoke like smoke machine but this club was way too cool for smoke machines it was like the people were the smoke machines everyone was literally just like smoking like a train and you walk in there and i remember it just like stinging my eyes because i was like oh my god and i grew up sort of in the 90s early 2000s i don't know when it came in in the uk but obviously you can't smoke inside anymore like when i was younger and my parents did smoke i would go to pubs or we would even go to like restaurants sometimes and there would be like a corner where you could smoke and so that was that was very weird for me because i'd like i'd experienced it a little bit when i was younger but it's obviously so normal now in the uk to not smoke inside but it was it was it was very weird going in there 
and going because it was still fairly light outside but we went into this club and it was just like pitch black there were like no windows everything was blacked out there were like a couple of lights otherwise it was just smoke loud music and a lot of people so i'm pretty sure the starlight had completely booked out this club for themselves obviously it wasn't necessarily just like starlight employees or like bloggers influencers like influencers weren't even a thing back then we were just called like bloggers um ollie's in the back loading his drums but yeah i think it was quite like a strict guest list <laughs> hello so it's quite a strict guest list um there weren't it wasn't just like a club that anyone could go into i think it was sort of you had to be kind of like on the guest list to get in so at this point i'd had a couple of drinks over a couple of hours but you gotta remember as well i had a lot of food i had the food at the hotel and then there were like a lot of hors d'oeuvre things like at the um at the actual event itself and so i was like a broke student at the time i i I was eating caviar. I don't think I'd, I think I'd had caviar like once in my life on another trip that like I can talk about as well if you guys want. But like I didn't even really necessarily like the stuff. But like I said, I was a broke student. I don't care what you're giving me. If you're giving me free food, I'm going to eat it and enjoy it. So I was thinking like a lot of caviar, um, a lot of other like foamy things. I don't really know what it was, but I was eating a lot of food and I probably had like two and a half drinks. And I'm saying that because I obviously wasn't like legally sober, but I was sober enough to remember everything. Like I literally remember random little story. I sat down to go for a wee and the toilets were like fully covered in graffiti. Again, very, very dark. This whole thing was literally just like, there was like no lights in this entire club. And I remember going into this toilet, I can literally picture it perfectly in my head. I'll see if I can actually find out what the club is called just from like searching up my old emails or something. I'll find out if I can figure out what the club is called and maybe try and insert some pictures or whatever. But I remember going in, there were a couple of sinks and like big mirrors. And I actually met, this is the first time I actually met, um, it wasn't even a subscriber at that time. They followed my blog and they actually met me and they were like, you, you write this blog, Coco Chic. And I was like, this is the craziest thing of my life and we had a little picture um so if you're still around if you happen to have followed me over onto youtube then hello how you doing so i remember meeting this girl i remember the layouts of the toilets i remember literally what it looked like and i remember sitting down and on because everything was obviously covered in graffiti loads of people had also used, used like markers and stuff to write down their names and like their numbers and whatever and as i sat down I remember the the first thing I saw was Jürgen was here. Now, I used to actually study German in secondary school. And I always remember Jürgen being like the default boy name in German. This has like no relevance to the story, but I just mean that like, I was sober enough to remember all of these things and whatever. And I think also a good thing to mention as well is like, don't get me wrong, you guys know, I love a couple of drinks. Like I like getting a little bit loose, but when it comes to work and stuff, like when I go away on trips and when I've done anything like that, even before YouTube and like the proper PR trips, I've always like gone and enjoyed myself. But I'm also very aware, especially when I was starting out, I've always been very aware that this is like a job that I wanted to pursue. And I didn't want to be, you know, like em I don't want to embarrass myself or do anything. that The brand might look at me and be like, you know, we're not going to work with her again or she was a liability or anything like that. So I've always been very kind of, especially when it's like work trips, even if it wasn't work, even if it was that you like I'd won a competition. I have a hair on my nose. I was going to drink, but I wasn't going to get like wasted or anything like that. And also I didn't really know anyone to go and get like drunk with or anything. Like I was still with Ollie at the time, but he wasn't with me. He was still living in Cornwall. I was obviously living in Surrey. And it's almost, it's almost silly that I even have to like justify it because obviously, as you guys know, what did happen. But I wasn't even very drunk. Like I was, I would barely even call it tipsy. So I remember everything. I remember everything leading up to it. I remember all the different conversations that I had with different people. So at this point, it was around about midnight or so. And you guys know me, like it could be a Monday, a Friday, it could be like any day of the week and I can stay up late. So I wasn't necessarily planning on going home at this point, but the girl that I was with, the girl that was from France, she said to me, she was like, you know, I might get a taxi back or whatever. And I have always been like brought up to basically not let someone go home by themselves, you know, to basically just not ever be alone especially like i i think this girl was a couple years older than me but i i don't know what she was really like i didn't know if you know that was the norm for her traveling by herself but i was like i'll go back with you as well um i just said you know we'll just finish our drinks and then we'll go back to the hotel because obviously we're gonna go to the same place anyway i thought you know what if i'm I'm not going to stay in a club by myself as well. Like, even if I had met, like, other people and I knew other people briefly, I thought, you know, 
this girl's going back, fair enough. I don't want to hang over tomorrow or I don't want to stay up too late, so I'll get back as well. And so, yeah, we finished our drink. And I also want to add that, like I said, I was brought up to basically always kind of never be by yourself and stuff. I was brought up and it was like drilled in me by my mum from such a young age to like never leave your drink unattended. Even before I was able to drink and actually go out into like bars and stuff, even if it's just like a Coke, anything like that, it was cover your drink like get those little like bottle things that you can have to stop your drink from being tampered with but yeah, i was actually always taught to basically be so careful with you know my drink everything like that and so i would literally if i was ever out at a bar like i said even before i could legally drink if i was literally just there with like a coke or something i would always have my hand over it or i would hold like a bottle like this or whatever never turn my back on my drink ever 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 like that was just like drilled into me from such a young age so we just sat at the bar and i I wish I could like draw what I can imagine because I remember it like it was yesterday. I was here, she was there, the exit was kind of like way back over there and then the bar was here. And I remember that I had my hand on the glass, they were quite short glasses, and I remember having my hand over my drink like the whole time. Well, pretty much the whole time it turned out because the girl that I'd met earlier, she basically was walking past me to then leave the club. And she was like, oh my God, I'm going. You know, she, I can't remember where she lived, but it was like, wasn't in England. She was like, oh no, you know, like probably won't bump into each other again anytime soon. So like gave each other a hug. And that must have been the one time that I had my hand like off my drink and my eyes off my drink it must have literally been like less than five seconds it was a quick hug and that is like the only time I can remember that I wouldn't have had my hand there because I was hugging this girl and so this is when everything kind of went tits up so I didn't notice anything with the drink. It tasted like crap anyway because they were so strong. So who I who knows if I even would have tasted anything because the drinks were so strong. But, you know, just finished it off and, you know, off we went. We had to go outside and I remember all of this. I remember we had to talk to the security guards because my phone had... No, her phone had died and mine didn't have signal because we were, like, quite low down in the, um, like, club bit. There was, like, a little kind of grassy area outside and so we spoke to security and we were basically just like we need to get a taxi back to this hotel i have no signal her phone's dead can you please let us know of like a taxi firm or whatever or can you like call us a cab or something so they ended up calling us a cab um got in it fine like everything was literally totally normal i remember the whole thing until i didn't so got on the cab the guy that was driving was like pleasant enough. He was asking how our night had been, all that sort of stuff. And I remember if you've ever been drunk before and you've been in a car, you know, that kind of like car sicky feeling. I started to get that a little bit and I can get that even if I'm sober. Like sometimes it does just kind of depend, but I usually find that if I'm in the back, then sometimes I can feel a little bit car sick. And I remember feeling that a little bit and I remember actually leaning into like the middle seat a little bit just so I could keep my eyes on the road because I thought, you know, feel a little bit off, but you know, nothing I've not experienced before, both sober and then also a couple of drinks in. And then all of a sudden, this is when like there was almost like two parts of the night because it was at this point i don't really remember anything like i said i used to study german in secondary school and i would be terrible now but i was a lot better like seven years ago when this all happened and i remember saying to the driver like i feel sick excuse me because he, we basically pulled up at traffic lights it was almost like a, a cross section I, we don't really have them much here in the uk but it was like a, a four-way traffic sort of thing and there were like traffic lights and like multiple lanes of traffic and he pulled up and i remember like it had gotten to this point where all of a sudden i thought i feel horrendous and i just i felt like i was wasted but also i didn't feel like i was wasted it was a really, really weird feeling that i'd never really had before like, like i said i've been very drunk before and I've also been very car sick before, but it wasn't either of these things. And so I basically said in probably very, very terrible German, um, basically, I'm really sorry, I feel sick. And we were stopped at the traffic lights and I basically just got out because I thought, I'm actually gonna be sick and I wasn't gonna throw up in this man's car or anything. So I, I thought the best thing for me to do, traffic was stopped and everything. And it was late at night, so there was only a couple of cars around. I got out. And I thought I was just gonna maybe just like need a minute. And I was so embarrassed at this point as well because I was like, like I said, I didn't ever wanna kind of like embarrass myself on this sort of trip, like a kind of work sort of trip. So I was thinking to myself like, have I drunk too much? 
but I literally must have had like five, six drinks throughout the whole of the night and a lot of food. So I got out of the car and I was thinking to myself, oh my God, have I just drunk too much? But I, I knew I hadn't. Like I knew literally before I'd left the club, I was still, you know, I say sober, obviously I wasn't sober, but I remembered everything and I just felt so weird. So I got out of the car and I was thinking, Jesus Christ, this is embarrassing. Like I wish I didn't have to do this, but it was, I would rather get out and potentially, you know, throw up outside than throw up inside this man's car. You know, I'm just like trying to be thoughtful here. So yeah, I got out the car, whether it was to get like air or whatever, I just knew I needed to get out of the car. So got out and that is when everything just kind of went almost like not totally from my memory they're like bits the driver got out and everyone was like you know the, the other girl in the car as well people were like you know what's going on i don't know what they were saying because this is literally like these are little chunks of like memory i basically have but i pretty much collapsed and i've never really collapsed before in my life but i pretty much collapsed and like passed out and I remember them being like, oh my God. And I was thinking to myself, I remember like the anxiety in my head. I was thinking, oh my God, like, what have I done? But, you know, I've obviously gone over this over and over and over again in my head. And I even checked with the girl the next day. I was like, I barely drank anything. And she was like, yeah, you seemed fine up until like the taxi ride. So yeah, at this point I was like, I remember a couple of bits. I remember a few people standing around me. I think one of the other people that was like pulled up at the traffic light might have been like a taxi driver as well or something. They'd gotten out because I remember there was like more than the people in the car with me sort of standing around. And I remember literally being like gone. And then I would wake up again, like very, very briefly for like a split second. And I'd be like aware that I'm like on a road and that I'm like at the back of the car. Um, and then I would go again. And then eventually I woke up again. Like I, I wasn't conscious, but I just remember there literally being like seconds of kind of me memory of me being like on the floor. And I remember there were blue lights and I, it was obviously an ambulance. And I remember getting wrapped up with that like tinfoil stuff. I literally just remember the tinfoil stuff. I was like on the floor literally like my face in gravel and they just like I remember being wrapped up I don't remember being taken into the ambulance or anything I just briefly remember the tinfoil and I think I thought in my head you know okay like I'm being looked after now and I literally don't remember anything for it must have been at least a few hours so I don't remember being in the ambulance I don't remember anything really about you know, when I was on the floor or what really happened then. Um, the next thing I remember is I woke up and again, I can picture this room literally like a photo. I was in this hospital room and obviously the hospital was quite quiet uh, because it was like the middle of the night. It was like the early hours of the morning. I don't even properly know, but it was maybe like three in the morning, half two, so it's somewhere around then. Like it, I, I literally don't know, but it would have been like around that time because I remember getting back a little bit later. I woke up in this bed and I literally, I had my whole outfit on still. I still have my high heels on. I'm like, I don't know how they stayed on my feet or if someone like placed them back on my feet, who knows? But I remember the outfit that I was we like wearing. I remember everything. And I woke up in this bed and no one was in the room with me. It was like a private little kind of like ward room thing. It was this little bed that was raised up quite high and there were machines beeping. I had like, I this might be like the wrong technical term. I'm, I don't really know what it was, but I had a thing here, like a needle, literally like in me, I guess like a hydration thing. I don't, I, that's the thing. I don't really know what it was, but there was like, I've had it, I've had like, um, when I had my wisdom teeth or one of my wisdom tooth out, it was like a similar kind of thing, you know, when they like sedate you and they put the thing in your hand and whatever. And it was like that, but it was like, it was it was on my arm around here i can't remember exactly where it was but i assume it was for like it was like fluids and hydration stuff i have no idea but basically i woke up in the middle of this hospital with whatever it was that was in my system i still don't know to this day um and i woke up there was no one around me like the girl that like the last thing i remember was obviously being in a taxi pretty much with that girl no one was there not even a doctor, a nurse, anything like that. I was in this dark room because it was obviously like pitch black and there were just machines beeping. There was obviously like a heart monitor thing or, you know, whatever it was. And I remember just panicking. And I'm in like these sort of situations, this sort of situations, if it happens often, in quite 
stressful situations, I'm normally quite calm. But this, I was like, my instant reaction was just, it was like a fight or flight kind of thing. And I don't know how I did it. The uh, the thought that, the fact that I even did this, I'm just like, Ugh. but I literally ripped whatever that was out of my arm. Like that, that sounds a bit dramatic. Like I, I don't think it was a case of like, you know, when you see in like Resident Evil or something, it wasn't quite like that. I literally just took this thing out, whatever it was. And I got up and I remember again, like I remember little bits from here on out. I twisted myself to the right and I put my feet on the floor. And this is how I knew that I was still in my heels because I felt like, I felt the heels on the floor. I was like, oh my God, like that just felt so wrong. I was like, I don't even know if I could stand on my own two feet, let alone heels. So I instantly took them off and I was just like groggy. Again, never felt like this in my life. So yeah, I had my feet on the floor and my shoes in my hand. And I remember thinking, I need to go for a wee. That was actually like my first thought. I was like bursting for the toilet and I got up and I came out of this um, like ward thing and opened this door. Again, it was like the corridors are pretty much like pitch black. Obviously no one really been walking around in them. And I went out and luckily there was a toilet, literally like I could pretty much see it from where I was. So I just followed the sign and there was like a disabled toilet. That was the only one that was there. Went in there and if you guys have ever been in disabled toilets, then you will probably be familiar of like when you sit down, normally there's like a bigger mirror. And so I was sat down going for a wee and right opposite me was a mirror and I was just looking at myself. And I remember actually talking to myself. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> As if my own reflection was gonna answer. Um, but yeah, I remember being like, what is going on? Literally just like looking at myself like is, is this actually real life? Like what is actually happening right now? Um, came out the toilet went back and then to the left down the corridor, there was like, she wasn't like a nurse such, but she was almost, I, I don't really know what she was doing, maybe like bringing like food or whatever. But again, I like not shouted out to her, but I spoke loudly enough so she could hear me kind of in German. And I was just like, hello, <laughs> Big Gates. Um, I, I literally, I, I can barely even remember any German now, but I basically said to her, um, it was like a mix of German and a mix of English. I was like, can you help me? Like, I don't know what's going on am I okay? I remember that being like one thing that I sort of asked a couple of times. I was like, am I okay? Like basically what the hell happened? Um, and they ended up getting who I assume was like my nurse or whatever to then come and see me. They were like, I'll go and get a nurse. So I sort of waited around and someone actually not like properly told me off, but they were like, go back to your room. I was like, okay. I was like, I think this is my room. So I basically just went back to the room that I was in and just sort of sat there on the bed and then eventually someone came in a woman came in and she essentially said to me like you've taken drugs and I was like I haven't taken drugs <laughs> I barely even drank tonight like I haven't taken drugs um and she was like well there's there's drug obviously because there was like quite a, a language barrier she basically was saying like there are drugs in your blood or whatever however she worded it and I was just sitting there thinking to myself I was like I haven't done drugs. And it was almost like she was a bit annoyed. Um, and then I sort of, I think after a while she realized that I was, you know, sort of like, I haven't taken anything and I was getting a bit, you know, kind of worked up. And I, like, I was fine. And that's why I kind of wanted to do like a bit of a trigger warning beforehand because like, obviously a lot could have gone wrong in that instance. Like if I wasn't basically with a taxi driver and with the girl and kind of like, in a somewhat safe area. If I was like still at the club or whatever, then who knows what would have happened to me. But I know I was like totally fine in regards to, it wasn't a fine situation, but like considering the situation, I was all right. Like I hadn't hurt myself. No one had done anything to me. It was, you know, as far as that kind of situation goes, it, it could have gotten a lot worse. So then once we kind of had that conversation, she basically said to me, you know, like, how are you feeling? Um, and I was like, I, I feel okay. I, I feel like crap, but you know, I'm a lot better than I remember being when I was literally like lying in the middle of a road covered in tinfoil. So then I don't know how long it took this part of the night kind of went a little bit foggy again, but it not too much time could have passed. Um, and I basically ended up being in this waiting room I had my bag. I, I literally, one of the first things I checked as well was like my bank card. I was like, have I still got my bank card? Have I still got my phone? Okay, cool. Cause I thought, you know, someone could have, you know, taken something from me or stolen. Um, but that was all good. And yeah, obviously I had to then pay for like 
being in hospital for however many hours and it wasn't too much money um, and I got to claim it back because of my travel insurance and stuff but I remember sitting in this little waiting room and there was like a little a box like a, a little room inside a room where they have like the glass and they sort of you know say you know this is how much it's going to be and they can like call you a taxi and stuff like that so I literally just I was <laughs> I don't even know what was going on and then I had to go and give them my card and fork over like whatever money was sort of left in my account really and by that time my phone was dead so I went to go and like look at my phone and obviously I hadn't spoken to Ollie I hadn't like told anyone about any of this no one could get in touch with me because my phone was dead and so I was just sat there must have been for like 10-15 minutes and then the taxi came picked me up the guy the taxi driver was so freaking nice he was like are you okay again like fairly broken english but he was like are you okay like what's going on blah, blah blah and i sort of explained the situation to him and he was like i have to pick up so many people in this situation that have like had their drinks tampered with um or whatever and he was like basically are you okay like do you need me to call anyone is everything all right and i was like yeah i'm okay i'm mildly traumatized but um yeah, like I said, nothing utterly terrible or super life-changing sort of happened. And so, yeah, I took him back to the hotel. I think it was like half four in the morning, maybe even like five o'clock in the morning by this point. And again, as a lot of you guys will know, Ollie is always up late. And I think he was also maybe a little bit worried because he hadn't heard from me. And I was sort of updating him about the night, kind of whenever I got Wi-Fi, I was sort of messaging on Facebook. So I got back and I put my phone on charge because again, I was like my instant reaction, because my mum was, you know, so overprotective and she would always sort of be like, you know, mess with me when you're home. Even if I was in the UK or anything, she's like, she would always, you know, want to know kind of where I was. And so that was like my first thing as I was gonna message mom and just be like hey I'm all right because I don't want her to worry like what was she gonna do I was literally in another country so I messaged her and I said hi sorry my phone died just got back so I was kind of trying to like buy time because I thought how am I going to explain to my mom who worries and has worried about me since I was like born if I would like go like literally at five doors down to my friend's house she would make me text her or like call her or something as soon as I got to my friend's house when I was younger how was I going to explain to my mum that I just had my drink tampered with in Berlin and I ended up in hospital by myself like I basically I didn't know what I was going to say to my mum so I basically just messaged her and was like you know just got home bit drunk haha ha. um and she sort of messaged back again like it was like the early hours of the morning my mum would always like wait by her phone basically and so she messaged back and she was like okay have a good sleep like blah 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 and I did the same thing to Ollie but I think Ollie kind of knew that something was off because I'd been talking to Ollie throughout the whole day like throughout the trip like letting him know as soon as I got to the hotel letting him know what was going on but either way I didn't really talk too much because I was knackered and I also had to be out of the hotel the next day by like 10 or 11 in the morning because then I had a flight to get home so the next day I felt terrible to say the least um and basically I again didn't want to look I'm professional. I did. I was so worried that maybe Stylight knew, or maybe like the girl had told them or something, um, which would have been fair enough if, you, if she did. But I was like, my first thought was, oh my god, have I made a total fool of myself? Um, and I went downstairs, and it was just the girl from France that was just at the breakfast table, and I sort of explained to her what happened, and you know that was that. And then we had to leave the hotel. Um, I didn't actually see any of these Stylight girls ever again actually but like most of the things we were doing that was quite normal because we were just sorting things out through like emails and stuff like that and they had everything kind of booked for us and they were like you know we've got this taxi picking you up at whatever time so I didn't actually have to see them which is quite a good thing because I didn't want to have to try and explain that I also didn't even really know what had happened at this point because I was literally like had like no sleep and it a wild wild night for the wrong reasons but yeah there's me feeling like death and we had to get out of the hotel we keep our bags there and everything and there was a few hours we had spare before we were going to get picked up to then get taken to the airport so we were just sort of wandering around berlin and i i remember seeing a few things we didn't really go and look at much i think she went and looked at a couple of shops where i was literally just like i need orange juice coca-cola salt and so we ended up going to burger king living that Berlin lifestyle, uh, trying out, you know, all the local cuisine, Burger King. Um, and I just had like a large Coke and a large fries and I could barely even eat the fries because I was just like dead. And to be honest, like I definitely, I feel like I definitely wasn't 
all right. <laughs> like I was, I was definitely still in like a bubble. I did not feel like any of pretty much any of that trip from the hospital thing onwards was real. It it was literally like I was in a little dream world. Uh, and then end up going back to the hotel, getting our bags, got picked up off I went on the flight and by the time I got back it was like one in the morning or something the next day and that day happened to be my 21st birthday <laughs> so yay happy birthday to me um so again I got picked up by just a taxi at um the London airport and then they drove me all the way up to Surrey and I explained to them what happened and the guy was so nice again like when you get a good taxi driver I love a good taxi driver because I sort of explained the situation to him and he was like, he was like proper cockney. He was just like, Jesus Christ, you know, what's going on? Like, are you all right? Like, did anyone hurt you or anything? I was like, no, 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 I'm good. And um, I was, again, like I would never normally do this because of how I've been brought up, but like sleeping in a cab by myself, again, it was would be something that I'd always try and avoid. But he was like, you know, you can go to sleep if you want. You don't have to keep talking to me if you're knackered, blah, blah, blah. And there was a bit of me where I thought, uh, I don't want to do that because of what, you know, let, I didn't even let my guard down. Like my guard was just down for literally like a split second and that happened. So I was like in like defense mode. Um, but I did end up falling asleep and he woke me up at one point because he was like, you know, love, I need to get some fuel. Do you mind if I'm stopping at the garage? I'm like, that's cool. Um, and then he came back and or no, before he left, he was like, do you want me to get anything? Do you want any like sweets or anything like that? I was like, no, no. But that was like, I was like, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I just like slept pretty much the whole way again and woke up. And by this point, when I was back in England, I'd actually text my housemates and sort of let them know what was going on. And they... <laughs> One of the girls, she was called Alice, and she was the one that I was texting and then talking to, like, the whole house, like, through her. But she was just like, oh, my God. And her text made sense because when I got back, they'd made me, like, little cat cupcakes. Again, I'll see if I have pictures or something. But it was little cat cupcakes with, like, little strawberry lace whiskers. Um, they put up, like, banners and stuff for my birthday. But obviously, I briefly kind of told her through text what happened. She was like, oh, my God, obviously worrying that... I'm not going to want to come back to this like celebration of my birthday when I'm literally like dead. But yeah, I got back and they, <laughs> I got to the door and they were literally just like, are you okay? Like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm all right. And they were like, yo, we made you cakes. I was just like, oh my God, like this is too much. Like so many emotions, whatever. Um, and yeah, I was basically just like, thank you so much uh i'm really sorry but i need to go to bed like they had like a bottle of like champagne and stuff i'm like i don't want to drink that and actually like i stopped kind of drinking quite a while after that i didn't really drink as much um i don't really know what happened i had like a wild couple of years when i was shouldn't have been drinking and then when i was like 19 i kind of stopped drinking as much and then after that i barely drank at all for like obvious reasons um but yeah they got me like this bottle of like prosecco and they were like do you want some like do you want a cake and i was just like i think i had a bit of a cake and i was just like guys i'm so sorry i need to go to bed and they were just like no it's fine um i think i had uni the next day didn't go literally just like i think i was just ill in bed for a couple of days so i barely even got to sort of experience my 21st um and i told my mum eventually when i was at the airport because i had wi-fi there and i had like a couple of hours or like an hour or so to wait for my flight and stuff so i sort of explained it to her a little bit more then she was obviously terrified and panicking but at this point it wasn't like i'm in hospital i've been spiked tampered with close one there um it was kind of like this happened i'm totally okay so don't worry but obviously she was just gonna worry anyway but um yeah explained it to wally as well and you know just sort of told my mum and then she sort of like told my dad and like told a few of my family members and stuff so I was getting like texts from them by the time I got back into the UK so I explained it to Wally as well and he was just like what the hell's going on he's like you should have told me I'm thinking <laughs> that was going to be a long conversation when I got to the hotel and I just wanted to get into bed at that time I do want to say though one like plus side of all of this or not necessarily plus side but uh, basically I was wearing white trousers like culottes they actually weren't really that messy at all which i was kind of impressed by like i'd literally i'd been lying on the floor i'd been in an ambulance i'd thrown up multiple times i'd gone to hospital my trousers were still white i couldn't even try to do that so yeah, i was actually quite impressed by that so in regards to what stylite did um they didn't really do all that much to be honest which like looking back on it now i felt like 
now I'm older, if this happened again, I would deal with this in a whole other different way because I basically emailed them and the girl there was like really, really nice. She was like probably only a couple of years older than me and she was like really apologetic and was like, we're going to find out, you know, we're going to get CCTV from the club and find out all different people on the guest list, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if they necessarily did do much because I never heard anything. I never really found out anything about who it was or what could have happened or whatever. I think what did happen was... There were a couple of like younger guys behind the bar that were a little bit flirty, like with everyone. And so I'm wondering if, because there were, weren't really too many people around us at the time. There was a couple of people like at the bar, like getting their drinks. There was some people behind the bar and that's kind of it. And it was such a small window because again, I literally like hugged this person then put my hand straight back down on my drink. So it must've been so quick. Um, but yeah, I assume that someone put something in my drink, whether it was like a bartender or, you know, whatever. Because, yeah, whatever was in that or like whatever ended up in me, I did not willingly take or consume. There's no real like ending to the story as such. There wasn't like any justice or anything. The, um, the guys at Stylight sent me a huge bunch of flowers and like an apology note, I guess, because they, uh, you know, kind of want to cover their asses a little bit. But yeah, nothing nothing really came from it. I don't fully know what happened. I'm guessing they didn't look into it any further because they kind of came back to me and they were just like, you know, we're going to look through the footage and like, we can't see anything yet, but like, we'll keep posted. And I never really heard anything else. So who knows, which sucks. I guess kind of like the moral of this story is even if you're super careful, like I was, and like, I still am to this day, people can still be, uh, sneaky that's that's one word for it um and so obviously just like look after your drinks look after yourself be cautious like all these things i'm sure you guys already know that you know your parents or a guardian or an adult or someone has told you at some point of your life but it is very much like even though i was and still am it still happened to me and luckily I got off quite lucky. Nothing about the situation was lucky, but I, you know, I wasn't harmed or anything like that. Like I said, uh, would not recommend, would give it a one star TripAdvisor review. Um, not the best way to spend your 21st birthday, but here we are. So yeah, guys, that is the story of the time when I went on a PR trip to Berlin and didn't have the best time. Uh, so let me know, like I said, if you do want to see more kind of like story time videos. I feel like this one was just a hot mess, but maybe next time I can do like a get ready with me story time or I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. I could talk about the time I went to New York Fashion Week with Tumblr for like two weeks, stayed in the bougiest hotel. I was actually like 17. I met celebrities, met designers, had dinner with like Nina Garcia and Oscar de la Renta, like crazy things. So let me know if you want to do a story time on that it's a little bit more chirpy than this one as always if you guys did enjoy this video and if you want to see more story times from me then you know what to do please give this video a big thumbs up i literally i can feel a burp coming up and i'm trying to avoid it i'm gonna like do that thing that you do with cats but yeah thumbs up subscribe if you're not already only 50 percent of my viewers are actually subscribed to my channel so if you want to make me very happy please consider doing that. And also, as you guys will probably know, YouTube doesn't like me very much. It never shows my notifications. So if you do want to see when I upload, because I upload quite often, then make sure you hit that bell button down below. It's like just here somewhere, click the bell, and then you can select uh, all videos or something. And it'll basically notify you, hopefully, every time I upload a new video. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it here for now because I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I am literally like shifting around in my chair because I've been dying for a week for the past half an hour. So I'm gonna leave it here. So as always, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload all the damn time. But apart from that, that is it from me. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. And I have to pee so bad. So keep an eye on your drinks, keep an eye on each other, stay safe, be good wash your hands after the toilet. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.